So let's now talk about the dose of omeprazole. So omeprazole is normally taken orally and usually it's a capsule medication rather than a tablet. Tablets are available, however they're more expensive I believe than capsules, so it's very rare that people are on the tablets. Usually it's only if someone can't swallow the tablet, sorry, can't swallow the capsule, then uh, we would get them the tablet. Now there are two dose sizes available, two main dose sizes, which are 10 milligram capsules and 20 milligram capsules. And the main dose of omeprazole would be one 20 milligram capsule once a day. This is the most common dose that you will see. And of course there are acute prescriptions for this, so they might be a month long, and then there are chronic prescriptions for this. So the elderly people who are going to be on this lifelong to protect their stomach from the medications that they're taking, they're going to be taking one 20 milligram capsule rather uh, every day indefinitely until someone tells them to stop, until their primary care physician decides that it's no longer necessary, which might be the case that they never decide that and therefore the patient is going to be on it lifelong. Acute prescriptions would usually be more younger people, so let's say uh, a 20 year old who is very weight conscious, wants to lose weight and decides to go on a water fast or decides to regularly fast. Indeed it was a fad a few years ago to eat one meal a day. It was called OMAD, one meal a day, uh, taking the first letter of each word in that statement, uh, making it into word OMAD. Um, so this was a big fad to lose weight, that you would just eat one meal a day, usually dinner, so you would skip breakfast and lunch, and then you'd just eat one meal, and you were allowed to eat as much as you could in that one meal, and supposedly if you did that, you would lose weight. Now, of course, it would only work the reality is it would only work to lose weight if in that one meal you consumed less calories than you were uh, burning throughout the 24-hour period. If you stuffed your face enough and ingested enough calories in that one meal, you're not going to lose weight. But it was a big fad and many people, uh, I think, were consuming less calories in that one meal than they would have if they were eating three meals a day plus snacking. Uh, so it, it was an effective strategy to help a lot of people lose weight. The problem with it, of course, is it means that you're doing effectively a 24-hour period with no food, a 24-hour water fast, and that leads to a 24-hour period where the stomach acid isn't being uh, neutralized by food. You're, uh, you've only got the water to dilute the stomach acid. So it can lead to a lot of stomach acid problems, so a lot of hunger pains throughout the day, indigestion, dyspepsia. Uh, so if this 20-year-old wasn't to understand what these pains were and didn't realise that they didn't, you know, put two and two together and realise that it's to do with this uh, diet that they're following, um, then they might go to their primary care physician, their GP, and complain about this pain. And the thing that the GP is going to pull out is most likely a PPI and is most likely going to be either a meprazole or lanzoprazole, at least in the UK. And the dose that they would give if they were going to use a meprazole would be 20 milligrams once daily, and they would not give them a chronic prescription initially. They would give them just a prescription usually for a month. So they tell the patient to take this for a month, and then hopefully at the end of the month uh, their symptoms will be improved enough that they won't need to continue their medicine on. In reality, we're hoping that they've adjusted their diet, they've come out of the fad, they've realised that it's not working and that they don't like following this diet pattern uh, and therefore they're no longer following it and then when they, the medicine runs out, they then won't need it anymore, they'll find that they don't need it anymore. Of course, if they decide to continue this eating pattern onwards, then the problem's going to persist, so they'll probably go back to their GP and the GP will renew their prescription if it's worked and maybe put them on it long term. Now, um, you can, however, give larger doses of omeprazole. You can give enormous doses of omeprazole is the reality. It's a very safe drug and you can give it in much bigger doses than this. So do not fear this dose. It's actually a tiny dose compared to maximum doses. So other doses that you will see, you will see people on 20 milligrams twice daily. So if 20 milligrams once daily isn't enough to control their uh, dyspepsia, then you can up it to 20 milligrams twice daily, BD, so once in the morning and once at night. And you can even go higher than that. You can go, you will see people on doses as high as 40 milligrams twice daily, and they'll be on that long term potentially. Now, it's not ideal 
really, once you go beyond 20 milligrams twice daily, you don't really want people to be on that long term. 40 milligrams twice daily is okay for a short period of time, but you don't really want them to be on that, you know, for months and months going into years. Sometimes people are on that and it is necessary, but it's not ideal. It's sort of like something that you look at and think, oh gosh, we need to try and get them off that. We need to try and reduce the dose of that to 20 milligrams twice daily. But certainly as an acute thing, you can put them on 40 milligrams twice daily. There's something else to add, intravenous omeprazole is a thing, so you can give it through a cannula straight into the veins. This is something that we do a lot in hospital, or not a lot in hospital, it depends obviously what department you work in. If you work in gastroenterology or general surgery, then you prescribe it a lot more frequently. I work in orthopedics, we don't really have need to put people on intravenous omeprazole that often. Um, but in general surgery, when I used to work in general surgery last year, we used to put IV omeprazole for people quite frequently. And the reason was, if someone has a major GI operation, so let's say they've had a huge portion of their intestine removed, maybe they've got a tumour, let's say they've got an ascending colon tumour, they can then have a right hemicolectomy and the two ends, the two cut ends are then joined together. So they remove a slice of intestine and join the two ends together primary anastomosis. Now, after that operation, the bowel has to heal. The two ends of the bowel have to heal together. They've been sewed together, but that's not enough. They have to, you know, heal back together and seal. And for a few days after the operation, the surgeons are probably not going to want that individual to eat, because if they eat, food is going to be going through their GI tract, through this portion of the intestine where the join has been made, where the anastomosis is the proper word uh, for it. The anastomosis has been made and there is a risk that that food leaks out if the you know if the suturing isn't absolutely perfect food contents could leak out of the bowel into the peritoneum and cause major problems majorly impede healing of those two ends together and cause potentially peritonitis and make this person really unwell and mean that they're going to need to go back to theater so Frequently, when people have had major bowel operations, where two ends of bowel have been sewn together artificially, we want them not to eat for several days afterwards. Um, and sometimes we give them intravenous nutrition. So parenteral nutrition is a thing. They can have uh, nutrients put straight into their veins. Usually it has to be uh, a big, big line, a central line or a pick line that goes into a massive vein. Because if you give it for a peripheral cannula usually it destroys the vein that the cannula is in it's really quite irritating and will cause phlebitis uh, but you can give parenteral nutrition if you've got a big enough line um, however the problem with this so we can give them nutrition the problem is that their stomach acid then isn't going to be di isn't going to be neutralized by uh, the oral food that they would normally be taking and therefore they can get really bad epigastric pain. So something we will do is we'll give them intravenous omeprazole again because we don't want them to take oral omeprazole because then that's putting water uh, and this drug into their GI tract. We don't want to give them anything by mouth. Uh, so we then give them intravenous omeprazole and we might give them 40 milligrams twice daily to prevent the stomach acid becoming too concentrated. Uh, so intravenous omeprazole is a thing. The other scenario where you could use that is if someone's vomiting and you want to give them omeprazole uh, and you don't think they're therefore going to be able to keep the capsule down or they won't do that because they're feeling so sick they don't want to drink a glass of water with this capsule. So IV omeprazole is something we use uh, in hospitals. Finally, you can give even larger doses of omeprazole in 24-hour infusions. So some people, when they've had massive GI bleeds, so let's say a patient has been really unwell with a gastric ulcer and the um, gastroenterologists have taken them to the endoscopy unit, they've put a camera down into their stomach, they've endoscopically repaired the ulcer, let's say, they've sewn it up so that it's no longer bleeding, uh, no longer causing a problem and they now want to give this person the best chance of healing, what they will do is put them on an intravenous infusion of omeprazole. So this isn't just a bolus. So usually when I talk about intravenous omeprazole, we will give a bolus. So you, the nurse will draw up the omeprazole in the fluid, in a syringe, and then they'll inject it all in into the cannula, and there's the medicine given, and they might give that twice daily. And the infusion is where you have a, the medicine in a bag of fluid, and then it gradually is pumped into the patient 
over a long period, over let's say an hour or maybe a 24 hour period. So if someone's had really bad pathology of the stomach, such as a gastric ulcer, one of the ways we will treat that is by putting the patient on a 24 hour omeprazole infusion where they are continually getting little bits of omeprazole going into their veins for a 24 hour period. And these infusions, when you look at the 24 hour dose of omeprazole that's delivered, you know, it's hundreds and hundreds of milligrams of the stuff. So it's a very safe thing to give just 20 milligrams of it orally. It's a tiny dose when you look at the maximum doses that can be given in these intravenous omeprazole infusions. So we'll stop there talking about dose. In the next video, uh, we will talk about um, side effects of omeprazole.